From now, we're going to put out the national big picture. We'll also discuss how important the riots are from the perspective of uh, people going out and voting and what they think of Modi. Do they think of him as a development icon? Do they think of him as a communalizing force? But before that, let's deal with West Bengal and with Orissa, two other uh, big states. And in West Bengal, we're seeing relatively the position that uh, was established in the 2009 elections actually continue. The AITC, the Trinamool Congress, which picked up 19 seats, likely to increase their tally to 23. The left front picked up 15. That is likely to go up to 6. The big story, of course, is that the Congress, which had 6, is likely to come down. Can we have the projections on our screen now? The Congress tally crashing from 6 to 2. That's a big loss. A gain of 4 seats for the Trinamool, a gain of 1 seat uh, for the CPM. The BJP has picked up some vote share but it isn't enough to translate yet into seats. They're picking up some votes here. And the other thing uh, that our pollsters have found is that if Muslims find that Mamta Banerjee could ally with Modi, they could desert, uh, they could start leaving the Trinamool and heading towards the left front because they are quite antipathic towards uh, the BJP and Narendra Modi in West Bengal especially. Let's now come to Assam. And over here, Tarun Gogoi is delivering because in the last elections, the Congress had seven seats. This is one of the few states where the Congress is being able to hold on to its tally. In the projections that are coming up in a moment, you'll see the Congress retains those seven seats. The BJP increasing its tally from four to five. The Assam United Democratic Front of Badruddin Ajmal uh, picking up that one seat. The Ashom Gana Parishad is on a downward spiral across Assam. Their vote shares are coming down. They're also now not being able to pick up any seat at all. Desperately seeking a possible tie-up with the BJP. If that were to happen, that could help both parties. Currently, of course, uh, the AGP in a spot of bother. The BJP is on an upswing when it comes to vote share, but not really translating into big numbers when it comes to seat share. Let's take a look at the figures for Himachal Pradesh now, uh, where there are four seats. And of these four seats, the BJP picked up three seats in the last Lok Sabha elections. The Congress picked up one. Uh, the projections show the figures are likely to stay the same. No change in the BJP's tally, no change in the Congress's tally. That is Himachal Pradesh. Let's now come over to Uttarakhand, where the Congress had done really well in the 2009 Lok Sabha elections. They picked up uh, all the five seats the BJP was blanked out. That is being inversed. The Congress tally now coming down to one. That's a loss of four seats for the Congress. The BJP tally going up to four, a gain of four seats. Clearly, a lot of the anger against the Vijay Bahugana government, a lot of the anger against the handling of the Uttarakhand floods, the infighting in the Congress, the double whammy of the anti-incumbency against the centre also operating locally is impacting the Congress's fortunes in the hill states. Let's now come to Urissa, where there is no big Narendra Modi wave because the only man who seems to matter in Urissa is the man on your screen. Naveen Patnaik from the Biju Janta Dal. He picked up 14 seats. He's got a lot of anti-incumbency he's dealing with. But in the projections that are coming on the screen in just a moment, you will see his tally is still 13. That's a loss of only one. The fabulous work his administration did during the cyclone. His image as a capable administrator helping him. Uh, the BJP has been able to push up uh, its tally. The Congress actually from 6 to 8. That's a gain of 2. Uh, but the BJP is getting some vote share, but they're not being able to turn that into seats. I want uh, Shiv Vishwanathan to take our viewers through West Bengal, because in West Bengal, we're seeing Mamta Banerjee emerge as another of the three Murti, you know, whose support will be important to form any next government. See, numbers sometimes hide a lethal dynamics. Yes. I think to a certain extent, you have to realize that Mamta Banerjee criminalizes Bengal as well as the CPM did. In fact, if there's anything secular about Bengal, is its criminality. I think, let's face this, numbers don't show this. And in that context, I find the left front's performance quite heartening. The left front is actually doing well, Veer Sangvi, uh, in Kerala. And they're doing reasonably well in Bengal also. So, people said that the idea of the left front was dead, the left front's time was over. Uh, Kamal worked really closely with the lefties earlier, but now uh, the left front is still holding on. They're not finished as an idea politically in India at least. But I think that's because in Kerala, yeah. there's always a swing in alternating. Sure. Yeah. So this so time, time wherever there is a bipolar. No, there are several people okay. who read the political obituary yeah. of a left front led by Prakash Karat. That's at least not happening. Yeah. No, well, what what is remarkable that. is that despite uh, the pressure and the criminalization in Bengal, 
that the left front is not only head but uh, in increased the seat. Sure. Yeah, but and, it's and, and, the and I find the Congress result a bit surprising because Congress has a very tough political leader and Adhir Chaudhary, but obviously he's not been able to hold out against the pressure. Yeah, fingers yeah, are correct. Yeah, yeah. You want to talk about the left front or about Bengal? About well, the left Bengal. front, I think Kamal has said it all. Uh, in Bengal, I think one of the ironies of Bengalis is though they are very literate and cultured people, when it comes to politics, they can be very violent. As Shiv has pointed out, when it comes to CPM and Trinamool, there's a lot of violence in cadres at the state level. The second thing is that Bengalis are seen as very impatient people. But when it comes to politics, they're remarkably patient. They gave, gave the left front the longest possible reign. They're doing this with Mamata. No matter what Mamata does, she doesn't seem to lose the support the people and my guess is she's there for a long time to stay and the problem Smriti Irani with Mamta Banerjee seems to be that if she were to tie up with the BJP pre-poll that would be disastrous even post-poll a large part of her vote bank would think that this is a breach of faith they don't want Mamta tying up with Modi and that's a problem that Mamta Banerjee needs to deal with if she's to consider a post-poll tie up with your party ma'am well, if it's a problem that Ms. Banerjee has to deal with, then this is a question that needs to be posed to Ms. Banerjee and not to the BJP. No, but you're a potential ally. This, you must have a convincing answer for her to ally with you. I will only say this, that post the elections, I'm extremely certain that all those who believe that this nation deserves good governance, all those who believe that every section of this nation of our people deserve development, every section which deserves uh, employment, every political party that believes in this shall gravitate towards the BJP-led NDA. Would that deter people at any level? Shiv Vishwanathan, especially amongst the Muslims, if they know that after the elections get over, there's a real possibility that Mamta could ally with Modi, would that send more Muslims towards the left? I think Bengal will be preoccupied with Bengal. I think in that sense, Muslims will vote for Mamta. I don't think they're too bothered about what's happening in the center because it's not clear what's happening in the center. Radha Kumar, this is bad news from the Congress's perspective also because the Congress tally, like in every state that we've seen, coming down from 6 to 2, that's really bad news from their perspective. Just six seats to two seats, I don't think that matters very much, it's part frankly. Of a national trend, which yes, is hardly being that, that anyway. is a general that there is a general trend that yes. is evident. But I would tend to agree with those commentators who have said that this trend is more of an anti incumbency trend than specifically towards one particular party. Uh, secondly, I think there are small places where I'm surprised that the Congress is doing reasonably well. Punjab, for example, you know every poll, whether it is yours or any other poll, has a, a, a very large margin of error, give or take up to four seats. Now, if you take that, then Punjab, the Congress the is doing of error well. The margin error is 3%. Uh, at the state and 5% nationally. That mm. is the margin of error that's factored in. So that's a huge margin of error. 5% is a very large margin of error by any statistics. Uh, so actually, if I, if I were a Congress person, which I am not, I would say take some comfort in the fact that I'm hanging in there in some places, that I'm doing okay in Punjab, okay in Himachal. So clear, you're hanging clear in a few states and being routed and in others, clear, and that's clear, good enough. Clear reasons for why I'm doing badly in several other states. If you go state by state, I think that the lessons for the Congress are very evident okay. state by so state. So let us, yeah, yes, and they quickly. should. Quickly, just two states, sorry, that we haven't talked about. One is Orissa. I think what the Biju Jantadal is going to do, what Naveen Patnaik has done, is remarkable. In an ideal world, he would be prime minister. Assam and Karnataka, what do they have in common? Both states where the Congress is doing well. What they have in common is that they're far from Delhi. The problem with the Congress is what's happening in Delhi. The further away you get from Delhi, the Congress doesn't. No, but the other reality is you've got strong leaders. You've got Siddharamaya in Karnataka. You've got a Tarun Gugoi in Assam, which you don't have any longer in states like Andhra Pradesh and Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh, where the Congress is being routed. Well, you could have argued that Gelo was that strong in I mean, He turned into a liability. Uh, eventually. Sure. So, I mean, Siddharamaya being a strong leader could go either way. But in the case of Gogoi, yes, I can see that. Sure. We're slipping into a break. When we come back, yes, you have your hand up. Come quickly. I think that, uh, you know, when we talk about... Your Rahul Gandhi versus Modi. Though Rahul Gandhi is not the Prime Minister of Canada as of now. But he is the leader who's being... Protected. So, we're coming to that. In just a moment, we will have figures for who people want to see as India's next Prime Minister. We'll also look at Rahul Gandhi's report card. We'll look at Narendra Modi's report card. We'll look at what Modi represents, what Rahul represents when we come back.